Gayatri mantra comes in both the Rig Ved and the Yajur Ved. And today now I am going to dwell only on this because many of you have asked for it and since you want to know everything about it and how to chant it, we will do something of that for the next half an hour. But you must grasp everything that is being said because this is the most powerful mantra available to us to bring us to this level of experience, to awaken us to reality. You know it is actually like a lighted torch which will open up the doors of wisdom for you. Gayatri is the most powerful mantra. What is a mantra? Mantra means manana trayate iti mantra. When you think about it repeatedly, it will liberate the mind. That is a mantra. And Gayatri means Gayantam Trayate Iti Gayatri. One who chants it, it liberates him. That is Gayatri. It is the most powerful mantra which, which is also a prayer. It is a prayer kama mantra to open your dhi, the higher faculty of the human intellect which opens you to the heart of reality. It is called the spiritual heart. It opens the spiritual heart so that you perceive reality as it is. I had told you about faculty development. It is one of the ways of perceiving these higher subjective realities, what we have been discussing, consciousness and all that. One of the potent ways to do that is to awaken the dhi. This, this is a faculty of the human intellect which simply brings the truth into your heart. It floods you with the light of supreme truth. So the Gayatri is a mantra to do this. It is a prayer for this faculty. How do you use the Gayatri? See, first of all, let me give you some basic information about Gayatri. Gayatri is usually given during our Upanayan ceremonies, isn't it? For brahmacharis, for householders, it is a very important mantra because it will develop this higher intelligence in you. And Gayatri is personified as a Devi and she is called Gayatri Devi. You must have seen the picture a five-faced goddess, she is called Veda Mata, she is the mother of all knowledge. From he comes all knowledge and the right perspective to everything. Hmm. So it all depends on the development of this faculty of dhi. Please remember this, Gayatri has enormous benefits and blessings. Even if you do a little of it, you will understand its power. It will not just awaken the higher intellect, it will open all your faculties of intuition. In the Vedas, it is um, five faculties of higher intelligence are mentioned. They are like this Dhi, which is your spiritual heart. Then you have Medha, which is a very bright higher intellect. Then you have Pragna, which is higher awareness, Dhriti, higher will and Smriti, great memory. Gayatri awakens all these five. These are five powerful faculties of your intelligence which gives you transcendental, brings into your heart transcendental knowledge. Gayatri awakens all of these. It gives great inner stability to your mind, deep inner calmness, just the chanting of Gayatri and it will remove obstacles from your path. It will remove dangers from your path. That is the power of Gayatri. It also gives you very strong memory. You see the last thing which we discussed, concentration, memory, all these capacities of the human mind are awakened and enhanced by the chanting of Gayatri. Hmm? So it is a very powerful mantra. I will first give you the story behind this mantra and then go into the mantra. Hmm? There is a big story behind how the Gayatri was uh, given out. You know how these mantras are come out of the mouths of sages? Do they think about it and invent them? They are mystic syllables which are discovered in very high states of samadhi and meditation. They are mystic syllables which lead into, which give you a direct insight into reality, lead you into reality as it were. So it is not a matter of, it is not a thought construction sort of thing. They are the outpourings of enlightened sages and this mantra, Gayatri mantra was given to us by Vishwamitra Rishi. Hmm? The uh, person who gave out the Gayatri is Vishwamitra, 
the presiding deity of the Gayatri mantra is the sun, Savitra. Sun was the symbol of Brahman in the Vedic age, hmm? the supreme reality. And the meter used in Gayatri chanting also is called Gayatri. Now this Vishwamitra Rishi, initially he was a king, he was a very great king, a very powerful king who had conquered a lot of kingdoms. It so happened that one day he was along with his entourage, along with his army, he was passing through a forest when he came across the hermitage of Vashishta Muni. Vashishta was a great Brahma Rishi of olden times. You must have heard of the names. Hmm? So, Vashishta's uh, hermitage he came across and he got down to pay his respects to the Brahma Rishi. So, you see this was our culture always the greatest administrators was, would come and ask for spiritual knowledge, would bow down to spiritual knowledge because they understood its value. They understood its value to human society. So, Vishwamitra entered the hermitage and his army also entered his all his troops and he came in front of uh, Vashishta, bowed down to him and asked for his blessings. And Vashishta asked, uh, asked him that everything is well in your kingdom and he said, yes, by your blessings everything is well. Please bless me with more power and wealth and all this. And then Vashishta said, please rest here for some time. Your men are also tired and I will offer you some food. Refresh yourself and then you can proceed. Now, Vishwamitra refused initially because he, he thought, how will they provide us food? There are thousands of men hmm? and why should we simply disturb the hermitage? So, he said, no, it is okay. We will go back to our kingdom and have our uh, food. But Vashishta insisted. So, Vishwamitra stayed back. What did Vashishta do? He got up from his seat, he went inside and he had a cow, a divine cow. Kamadheno, you have heard? Hmm? The giver of all boons. So, he whispered something in her ear. He whispered something into her ear and it seems this divine cow, she was a goddess in the form of a cow. Whatever she was asked for, she could give. So, he asked for food for the entire army and very quickly huge uh, vessels of all sorts of delicacies and rich food was presented in one corner of the ashram. And Vashishta went and invited the Vishwamitra and all his uh, disciples, not disciples, his uh, soldiers to come and have the food. All of them relished the food and it was divine like nectar. And then Vishwamitra was so surprised, he asked Vashishta, how did you get all this in this forest? And then he said, see I have a mother, I worship her as mother and uh, she is the one who provides us everything that we require and she is a Devi. So then uh, Vishwamitra, you see greed came into him and the ego was already there. He thought this cow should belong to me because I am the king, everything in, the, in my kingdom belongs to the king. So, he told Vashishta, give me the cow, I will give you any price you want for it. Vashishta said, do not make this mistake, she cannot be sold. She is a goddess, she is a Devi and she is the giver of all boons. I will never part with this cow because she will, she wants to stay only close to a place where there is this ambience, where there is Brahma Vidya being practiced, where there is Brahma Jnan, she will not go into your palace. But Vishwamitra was furious now. He said, what do you mean? I must have that cow. And he told his men, go and forcefully bring her. At once, the cow ran behind Vashishta. And Vashishta said, do not make this mistake, I told you. Once more, I tell you, she is a divine being. Do not make your soldiers touch her. Otherwise, you will pay for it. And Vishwamitra said, I do not believe in all this. I am going to take the cow and go. And then Vashishta just raised his Brahma Danda. You must have heard of the story. Huh? And the entire army was destroyed. All of the men fell down on the ground. And Vishwamitra was simply stunned. What happened? It was the power of the realization of Vashishta, which is that Brahma Danda which he would hold. He would just hold that uh, wood on which he would do his spiritual, his japa. And the entire uh, uh, army was simply destroyed. So, he said that there is some great power in this, in this particular thing. Then he tried to attack Vashishta again just by raising the Brahma Danda, he became powerless without any strength. Then he said, Dhik Balam Kshatriya Balam 
Brahma Balam Eva Balam, which means all this this prowess and uh, strength which I had, the ego which I had in being so strong and courageous with such a huge army, such a huge kingdom, it means nothing compared to this strength which this sage has. This is the real strength. A knower of Brahman is so supremely strong just by his mind, by his will, he can control a whole army. So then he said, well, I will acquire this kind of strength and then I will come and show you. And he turned back. He went back to his kingdom. He gave his kingdom to his sons to manage and he went into the forest to do austerities. And it seems for a long time, if you go to the Puranas, they will even say thousands of years. Because, you know, that sense of time is different. You know how they, they sense time? Time is in you. So, for a long time he performed austerities and then after that he uh, came to this understanding. Slowly his mind was changing but still he had not overcome the tendencies of his mind. The tendency towards arrogance, ego, pride. This was still not completely gone. So, at this point of time comes the story of Trishanku. Hmm? Have you heard that story? You know, there was a king who wanted to go to heaven with his body. And he went and his name was Trishanku. He went and requested Vashishta, please help me. Vashishta said, please pass on. I do not do such stupid things. And he was angry. He went to his um, sons, Vashishta's sons and said, your father cannot send me, you please send me. So, he was cursed by his sons. And he became a very ugly person and then he comes to Vishwamitra who was doing his austerities. And he says, you see, Vashishta has refused to send me. Can you do it? Now, you see, an enemy's enemy becomes your friend. Uh, so, this uh, he became automatically became Vishwamitra's friend. And uh, Vishwamitra said, what? Vashishta refused, then I will do it for you. I am there, don't worry. I have performed so much austerity. With the power of this austerity, I will send you to the heavens. And he did, did uh, all sorts of his uh, rituals and all that. And Trishanku started rising to heaven in that very body. But this is against the law of cosmic existence, isn't it? One Only after death one can go wherever, according to his karma, wherever he has to go. And he cannot go to heaven like this. So, at once Indra came into the sky and said, you can't do this. Please stop it. And Vishwamitra said, what do you mean? I have done so much tapasya. He will go up. And so, Trishanku hung in the middle. They would not allow him into heaven and he could not come down on earth. So, it seems Vishwamitra with his powers created a heaven for him right there. And like this, uh, in, in a state in which he was upside down, you know, he hung there. And even now they say Trishanku heaven. When somebody is undeciding about something, they say Trishanku state. So, this was uh, Vishwamitra's power. After this episode was over, Vishwamitra suddenly realized that he had spent all his power, spiritual power in doing all this for that Trishanku. Just because he hated Vashishta and he helped him. He understood the level of his pride and his ego. It is all, you see, Vash Vishwamitra's life shows you how important it is to get rid of all this to control your mind. To actually reach the knowledge of Brahman is no joke. Hmm? So, when he understood all this further, he went into austerities. He said, all my spiritual power got exhausted by doing all this. I will perform more austerities. He went deep into the forest. Again, he sat down. Again, hundreds of years passed by. This time, another big obstacle came before him in the form of an apsara called Menaka. Hmm? You might have heard of that story also. So, she seduced him and then he, uh, again, he went out of his austerities and for a long time, he was not in touch with this, this deep goal which he had fixed for himself, that of becoming a Brahmarishi, getting the knowledge of Brahman, becoming equal to Vashishta. He forgot about that. After a long time, he came to his senses and then Menaka also left him and he came to this understanding that how am I wasting my powers? How I am wasting my time? Lust, anger, ego, hatred, this... Uh, feeling of uh, malice towards somebody, jealousies, all this can actually ruin you completely. It, it will stop your progress towards your fixed goals. This is what Vishwamitra's life shows. It also shows that through, through the triumph of his will and his understanding, he overcame all this. He again plunged into great austerities and this time 
he got a certain level of illumination. After a long time of austerity, he got uh, the vision of Lord Brahma who came to him and asked him, blessed him with the title of Maharishi. Maharshi. Hmm? Then Vishwamitra said, but do not I deserve the title of a Brahmarishi? Then Brahmaji said, no, for that you need the blessings of a Brahmarishi. So go to Vashishta, <laughs> take his blessing. If you have re really removed all these negativities from your mind, if you have conquered them, not just removed temporarily, please see this. What tapasya means, you must have a knowledge. For self-knowledge, tapasya is required. So, tapasya means purging your mind of all impurity, completely cleansing it, not simply emptying it temporarily, becoming absolutely pure in every way. Then only this knowledge is possible. So, he said, go and take the blessings of Vashishta and Vishwamitra came to Vashishta. When he came near the hermitage, he heard the conversation between Vishwamitra and Arundhati. Vishwamitra, uh, sorry, between Vashishta and Arundhati. Hmm? Vishwamitra has come to the hermitage of Vashishta. So, Vashishta is telling Arundhati, you know, I have been following the spiritual progress of Vishwamitra and I am supporting him silently that he attains this illumination. He is a good man. His very name indicates Vishwasya Mitra is Vishwamitra. He is the friend of all. But this arrogance had come into him. I hope he will be able to overcome it. I am helping him in his spiritual progress. As soon as he heard this, Vishwamitra was so ashamed. With whom? That is why he is a Brahmarishi. He is beyond all this duality, all this stupidity. And so he came and fell down at Vashishta's feet. Please forgive me for what I have done. As soon as his head touched the feet of the sage, a spiritual current passed through him. And spontaneously in his heart arose the Brahma Gayatri. Om Bhur Bhuvaswa Tatsavitur Varenyam Vargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodayat. Spontaneously it is rising within him. It inundated him and he merged into Samadhi. When he came out of that state, he found Vashishta blessing him and this Gayatri emanating from within his heart continuously. When he went back, then Vashishta told him, now you have become a Brahmarishi. You have attained the knowledge of the Supreme by overcoming all weaknesses at all levels. And then when he returned back, he gave this Gayatri to everyone. That is why he is the Rishi who gave the world the Gayatri. So that this is, this is a means. You see, what is the Siddhi for the Siddha becomes a means for those who are trying to become Siddhas. So, the Gayatri, that is how it comes to us. It is, it encapsulates the essence of Vedic wisdom because it is a prayer for Dhi. If you have understood the value of this higher level intelligence, what is called the spiritual heart, the awakening of this, then you, you get entitled to receive that knowledge. If you do not understand its value, the value of this level of spirituality, how will the knowledge ever come to you? So, this is the Gayatri Mantra. Let us just discuss the meaning and then we will repeat it. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Om is the symbol of Brahman, hmm? the sound symbol of Brahman. Bhu Bhuva Swaha are the three planes of existence, which Bhu means actually this earth. Bhuva is the world of mains, Pitralok jo kehte Swa is Swargalok, the heavens. Hmm? Now, all these worlds, there are slight different interpretations also, which you will get of these three words, Bhu, Bhu, Bhuva, Swaha. Like for example, Bhu is considered the embodiment of vitality. Bhuva is the destroyer of suffering. Swa is the giver of happiness. Like the slightly different interpretations also you will find. Typically in our Shastras, Bhu, Bhuva, Swa are these three worlds of this earth, the world of mains, Pitralok and uh, the world of the gods. Now, all these three are illumined by what light? Tat Savitur Varenyam, by the light of the sun. Who is Varenyam? Who is the most, uh, the best, the choicest, the most adorable one? He is illumining all these three worlds, bright, the bright sun, Bhargo, the destroyer of all sins, Devasya, that divine one. You see, Dev, the Dhatu for Dev is Div, 
which is divinity, shining, the shining one. Dhimahi, may he imbibe my intellect. Dhiyo, this intellect which is ours, yonaha prachodayat, may he illumine that intellect and imbibe, may my intellect become capable of imbibing this supreme knowledge. In this way, may he illumine my intellect. Hmm? So that I may get this Brahma Jnan, Brahma Vidya, so that I may experience the knowledge of the supreme reality. May he so inspire my intellect, the sun, the most adorable one, the divine being who illumines the three worlds, may he so illumine my intellect that I will get the knowledge of the supreme. This is the prayer of Gayatri. So, let us repeat it. Huh? Once repeat it after me, Om Bhur Bhuvaswaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodayat. So, every syllable should be very clear. Confidently you must repeat it. Hmm? See, I have put it here. Please see this, every syllable should be very clear. When you repeat it, you can't mix up words and repeat it anyhow. It's a very powerful mantra. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Once more, repeat it after me. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Tat Savitur Varenyam. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. Dhiyo Yonaha Prachodayat. Now, how do you chant Gayatri? Usually, it is prescribed that you must chant it in the Sandhya period, which means at dawn and at dusk. Hmm? These are very special times when nature is very quiet. Naturally, the Gayatri will fructify, blossom within yourself if you practice it at that time. Dawn and dusk, at least at these two periods. And usually, one not eight times repetition is recommended. You can also do it 36 times at dawn, 36 times in the noon and 36 times at dusk time. Hmm? And another thing you should remember is you can't do Gayatri anywhere and anyhow. You must do it in a clean place, in a posture, proper posture. Treat her respectfully. I told you it is a po very powerful mantra. She is a Devi. How would you worship a Devi? So, just repeating it anywhere, repeating it half, do not do that. It, it is something very sacred, something very elevating. So, you must do it with full respect. And then, if you cannot do it 108 times, at least 12 times intensely with concentration you should do it, with the meaning going on in your head. Hmm? And then, Gayatri will yield its own fruit. You know, people do Gayatri Puraschcharan, you might have heard of this. In Maharashtra, thousands of people do it every year. It is repeating 24 lakh Gayatri in a specified period of time. And they do it with such intensity. After that period, you should see their very face has changed. It awakens your entire energy and lifts it to the level of realization. It is actually divinizing you so that you may intuit the highest in you, Brahman in you. Hmm? So, this is the power of Gayatri. Only if you do it, you will know it. If you do not do it, it will again remain like a theory to you. You know Madan Mohan Malviya, who was the founder of BHU, Banaras Hindu University, he was a great advocate of Gayatri Puraschcharan. He used to, he did it many times. In fact, many people have done it. And it is the best way to change your entire mechanism. Your very body will change, I am telling you. Your genes will change. Your mind will change. Because it is awakening the faculty of dhi within you. If it is done with concentration, with, with complete mind, it will awaken what it is meant to awaken right within you. And these fivefold faculties of higher intelligence are required for success anywhere in your life. Please remember this. I told you what are they? Dhi, then Medha, Pragna, 
dhriti and smriti these are the five fold qualities of your intelligence dhi is your spiritual heart where you get this knowledge of brahman medha is your higher intelligence pragna is higher awareness dhriti is the higher will and smriti is memory complete memory so if you want all of these put together practice gayatri and see it was part and parcel of our life i received the gayatri when i was very young and uh, usually in india during upanayana ceremony they give it hmm so the the thing is this all these things have to be done to be known you have to do something about it it's not a theoretical concept i just told you you listen to it and it's done not like that hmm this is you practice the chanting you will see the change coming over you mind will just clear up intelligence will just awaken within you you will understand all the dimensions of intelligence not this stupid one unidirectional intelligence which you don't know where it will take you which is dependent on outer objects not that kind a wholesome holistic form of intelligence which is all integrative which sees the whole thing all together this level of intelligence is required for higher you know understanding and medha actually helps you understand the scriptures mm, the subtleties a very refined intellect will be generated the subtleties of the scriptures become graspable so all these blessings come with gayatri practice it and see and you yourself will understand what it is about that's why i gave you the whole story of gayatri so that you remember the story and practice the chanting